Face the State. Good morning and welcome to Face the State with the Montana Television Network. I'm Margaret DeMarco with CARE TV News in Great Falls. This month marks one year since Ash Loring Heavy Runner was last seen on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation in northern Montana. This June also marks one and a half years since Matthew Grant went missing and was found dead in Browning on the Blackfeet Reservation. And two years ago this month, Royland Rides Horse of the Crow Agency died from injuries she received after being beaten and burned on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation in southeastern Montana. During this morning's Face the State, we will not only examine Ashley, Matthew, and Roy Lynn's stories, but the epidemic of missing and murdered indigenous people across the state. We will also discuss statistics, the community response, and the national attention finally coming to this issue. We have been following Ashley Loring's story since she went missing in June of 2017. Here is a timeline of some of the stories KRTV has produced about Ashley's disappearance and the effort for information. Authorities and family in Glacier County are continuing to search for a missing woman from Browning. Police in Glacier County are continuing their search for Ashley Loring, also going by Ashley Heavy Runner. She's 20 years old and was last seen on Monday, June 5th in Browning. She's 5 foot 2, about 90 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. There is now a reward for information regarding the whereabouts of Ashley Lorin Heavy Runner. The Bureau of Indian Affairs is offering $1,000 reward for information. Lorin is 20 years old and was last seen on Monday, June 5th in St. Mary. During a search near Bab, family says they found clothing that matches the description of what Lorin was last seen wearing. And it's been more than six months since Ashley Loring Heavy Runner was last seen on the Blackfeet Reservation. Last month, Ashley's sister Kimberly Loring organized a walk in Bab. They went door to door looking for any information about the whereabouts of Ashley. The Blackfeet Tribal Business Council announced that they were offering a $5,000 reward. The Bureau of Indian Affairs also offered a $1,000 reward. Loring says she hopes to do another walk to gather more information, but has not said where it will take place. The Bureau of Indian Affairs is now offering a $5,000 reward for information leading into Ashley's disappearance. The Blackfeet Tribal Business Council is also offering a $5,000 reward. In a press release, the FBI said the Bureau of Indian Affairs requested their help to find Ashley. The FBI says it is able to offer access to additional resources that can be devoted to the investigation. The family says they're relieved that the FBI is now involved in helping find out what happened to Ashley. We won't stop searching for Ashley and we are relieved that the FBI is, in, or that the FBI is involved because it seems like now we are getting more updates and it seems like we are being taken serious now. We will be getting answers soon, hopefully. We just need those people with the information to come forward. The official date of when Ashley Loring, also known as Ashley Heavy Runner, went missing is ever changing. Last year was June 5th, then it changed to around June 7th, and now the Federal Bureau of Investigation say it is around June 13th. Nonetheless, Ashley is still missing and family and friends are keeping her spirit alive. Really nice, you guys all came, thank you, and then we all got to do this as one. On June 9th, the family and friends of Ashley Loring came out to keep her story alive. It was a really um, nice turnout. A one-mile march through Browning and a prayer vigil at Powwow Grounds marks the one-year anniversary of Ashley's disappearance. Her sister Kimberly Loring says one year has been way too long. I hope we won't go another year. I hope it's soon. I hope we can bring Ashley home as soon as we can because it's the worst feeling in the world. Kimberly and Ashley were raised on a horse ranch near her butte. Loring says Ashley is in all of her favorite memories. I've always told Ashley that I'd always have her back and I would always be there to pick her up when she fell down. Loring says she has not seen her sister since Ashley came to visit her in Missoula in the first couple of months of 2017. The last time they spoke was around June 6th of last year, when Loring was vacationing in Africa. Loring regrets not being able to keep one promise she made to her little sister so many years ago. It feels, it feels, it feels awful sometimes because I felt like I should, I let her down, but I'm here and I'm always here. I just wish things would have went out, or I just wish things 
could have turned out differently for my sister. Loring says Ashley was last seen by family on June 5th, and the last time she was on Facebook was on June 8th. I feel like we were we were in such shock and we were in denial when and we didn't know what to do when Ashley first went missing. And now I wish uh, sometimes I wish someone would have come forward and told us um, how we should handle this. Now that's been a year, we know a lot more. We know how to handle it, um, and we know how to bring people to together now. They have held searches in different areas around Browning, and they have gone door to door and hope that someone knows something about what happened to Ashley. Bring Ashley home! And as family and friends keep marching on, they are also bringing awareness to other murdered and missing Indigenous people. Also, show support towards the other families here in Browning, and and then then also reach out a helping hand to them as well. And, and, and to also tell them that we are here for you as well. Clearly what they went through when, when, when those boys went missing. We, we know as a, uh, we have the same feelings, we know what they've gone through. And we're just here to show them that we are here to help them as well. And I'm really glad that they came with us. And as Kimberly keeps her sister's story alive, she hopes that one day Ashley will come home. That's all we want is for our Ashley to come home. That's just all we want and that's the only thing in the world that, that would make, make our family rest and to, be, and to be at ease is if we know that Ashley will come home. We will bring her home. There is a $10,000 reward being offered by the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Blackfeet Tribe. They are seeking information that will lead them to the whereabouts of Ashley. To leave a tip about Ashley's disappearance, call the Federal Bureau of Investigation. United States Democratic Senator John Tester provided the following statement to MTN News on the missing and murdered Indigenous women in the state of Montana. We have an epidemic on our hands. Far too many Native women have experienced violence and that must change. As a member of the Senate Indian Affairs Committee, I'm working hard to prevent these horrific crimes, support survivors, and bring the assailants to justice. According to the National Institute of Justice, more than 80% of Native women have experienced violence. Almost half have experienced it in the last year. In order to reverse this trend, we must empower tribes with the legal authority to bring offenders to justice. We must provide Native communities with the resources they need to support survivors. And we must shine a light on this issue that has festered for far too long in the dark. We made a lot of progress on the first front when we reauthorized the Violence Against Women Act back in 2013, giving tribal governments the ability to arrest and prosecute both Native and non-Native offenders for sexual and domestic crimes. But this progress has been limited by a lack of resources. For too long, critical resources have dried up before making it to Indian country. And that is why I've introduced the SURVIVE Act to designate 5% of the Crime Victims Fund specifically for tribes, providing Indian country with much needed dollars to assist and uplift survivors. I've also introduced Savannah's Act to increase cooperation and information sharing between tribal, state, and federal law enforcement agencies when it comes to these cases. And last month, we passed a resolution designating May 5th as National Day of Awareness of Missing and Murdered Native Women and Girls. I hope these efforts will bring awareness and appropriate resources to this important issue so that we can end this epidemic once and for all. Two Blackfeet Shoshone filmmakers are making a documentary about the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous women. They have traveled all over the state and hosted free screenings of when they were here, though the brother and sister team are not stopping there. Creator, do you hear our sister's cries? It actually started in a school project that I had while I was in a graduate school. Ivan McDonald said the project was based around community engagement. They thought about doing a piece on suicide prevention, but they soon were headed in a different direction. One of the um, girls that was in our group um, brought to our attention that a woman was missing on the Crow Reservation, where she's from. And you know, we have 
um, our own family history with it. Ivan enlisted his sister Ivy McDonald to help the group shoot the short documentary called When They Were Here. Now more than ever, we need to come together as Native women and help each other, encourage each other, support each other, so we can survive this epidemic of violence against Native American women. We always grew up like wanting to make a film together and so it just kind of gradually, you know, and I was in the program, the <clears throat> film program, so I, you know, we just kind of were like, oh, let's do this. When she went missing from the school, we were told that evening. Though for Ivy and Ivan, the documentary is a personal story that hits close to home. Interview my um, uncle Kenny still smoking and my aunt Carol, our cousin Monica still smoking, was kidnapped and murdered when she was um, seven, seven or eight years old from here on the Blackfeet Reservation. And in the investigation of Monica's death, the police, of course, didn't take it too seriously. It took them just three weeks to shoot and three days to edit the 22-minute documentary. The siblings realize the best way to educate non-Native individuals is through film and other media platforms. Most research and studies show that um, non-Natives learn most of their information about Native people from film, media, and if we're sort of able to not control the narrative but have a say in it, we think that's the perfect way to educate people and let them know about the issues and crisis and sort of what is happening on the reservation. Ivan and Ivy have traveled across Montana to present when they were here. They say the most fulfilling part is the question and answer portion of the presentation. Being a Native woman myself, it's to finally be able to let people know that we matter and that we are here and it's it's a, it's a good thing and I think that MMIW is definitely something that's going to be talked about for a long time. He said there was an incident in Missoula and I knew right then and there that it was my mom. Ivan says they have had people from all over the country contact them. So many more of the stories need to get out. If the fact that our story and sort of our film is sort of one of the only ones that's really being heard, for me that just means that there needs to be more. Through their work, they have found some of the issues lie with the justice system on tribal lands. These women fall through the cracks is because so many of those jurisdictional issues come into play where even if families seek justice, they won't often find it. And I didn't know how to explain what had happened. And all I tell my kids is that she's an angel. Even though the documentary focuses on only two cases that happened right in Browning, Montana, Ivan says they are already expanding on their work. You know, we did three more cases, shorter, smaller films for um, the Cayman, which is the University of Montana newspaper. Ivy and Ivan are not stopping. They are working on a longer documentary that will feature more stories of missing and murdered indigenous women. Any little bit helps. Any, anything that you can do to raise awareness or educate yourself about it, it's going to help. Daughters, be brave, be strong, be resilient. MTN News has been following Ashley's story for the past year, but we are not the only news organization covering her story in Montana. From local news to now national headline, Ashley Loring has become the face of missing and murdered indigenous women across the country. It feels amazing that Ashley's name has reached national news. So we're bringing awareness, so that's how you stop it, is to bring the awareness. National Public Radio and other news outlets came to Browning on June 9th for the March in honor of Ashley Loring. Everybody should know that Ashley is missing as long or as well as everyone else that is also missing because everybody is important. Some have been following Ashley's story since the fall of 2017 and others are just finding out about it one year later. finally to have like this national spotlight on and it helps so much. Having a face for the missing and murdered indigenous women movement makes it more than just a number on a piece of paper. This one from Gleeson was only eight years old. You know these women are just seen as like statistics and stuff and so like 
when you actually have people like this, like, you know, Ashley's family, Clarence's family doing this, it's so important because it's like, these are the people that care about them. They're, you know, they're loving family members. The men and women who march for Ashley are helping to give her a voice while her family keeps the hope alive. In a pray, never feel this pain, oh no. With Ashley's name reaching households across America, she is bringing the missing and murdered indigenous women to the forefront of many people's minds. It's, yeah, it's been swept under the rug for way too long and people need to know that this is going on everywhere. And it's, it's a crisis. United States Republican Senator Steve Daines provided the following statement to MTN News on the missing and murdered indigenous women in the state of Montana. For far too long, the stories of missing and murdered indigenous women have gone unheard. And we know the facts and they are startling. American Indian women face murder rates that are more than 10 times the national average, and that is unacceptable. We cannot sit around while families continue to get torn apart. Immediate action must be taken to put an end to this horrible epidemic. And we can start by strengthening law enforcement within tribal communities, including strengthening the Amber Alert systems for missing children and giving law enforcement in tribal communities access to national criminal databases. We must also do more to raise awareness about what is going on in Indian country. You know, many in Montana have heard about some of the high profile cases of missing or murdered women. Hannah Harris, a member of the Northern Cheyenne tribe, was murdered in July of 2013. Roy Lynn Rideshorse of the Crow tribe died from burn injuries in June of 2016. And one year old Kensley Olson was beaten to death and thrown into a dumpster on the Fort Peck Inning Reservation in 2016. She was just a baby. But these women, these girls, these mothers, these daughters, and children are just a few of the hundreds whose stories never make the headlines. And that is why I introduced a resolution to designate May 5th as the National Day of Awareness for Missing and Murdered Native Women and Girls. The resolution also commemorates the lives of all missing and murdered indigenous women and girls who have gone missing or been murdered. Montanans cannot turn their heads away from this crisis that's right in our backyard. We must stand together as Montanans and say enough is enough. We must stand together as Montanans to end this epidemic. The stories of missing and murdered do not stop at indigenous women. There are many men who are also missing and have been murdered on tribal lands across the nation. Matthew Grant's story began only a year and a half ago. So when Ashley first went missing, I feel like you could almost feel the shock through Montana's native communities. Tara Walker Lyons says it is not because Ashley went missing, but it is because Ashley could have been anyone's daughter. Walker Lyons says she feels uneasy about going up to Browning alone, but she says it never used to feel like this. So now with Ashley's disappearance coupled with my cousin Matthew's death, we need something, something. we need somebody to do something. Matthew Grant went missing in December of 2016 during a winter storm. Walker Lyon says she was not in Brownie at the time, but she started seeing her family posting on Facebook asking if anyone had seen Matthew. The sense of helplessness, I think, being from far away, uh, was probably, you know, I, it was paralyzing. But my family, that's a kind of terror that I don't think you can really fathom unless you've been in those shoes. Matthew moved from Canada to Montana just a few days before he went missing. And he was staying with family in Browning. Family members say Matthew could bring humor to any situation and he could cheer anyone up. And so he had just learned not long before that that he was going to be having a baby. And his son now, his name is Matthew Jr. He looks just like him and um, he never got to meet his dad. And I think that that right there is um, a really huge hit to the gut to our family. Matthew was really looking forward to becoming a dad and providing for his family when he went missing. Different reservations all over. We're all dealing with this lack of res response time. We're not being taken seriously, it feels like. I know that my family had mentioned that um, 
they would provide information and they felt like that information may not have been followed through on. Blackfeet Law Enforcement, Bureau of Indian Affairs, and the Federal Bureau of Investigations all have jurisdiction on the tribal lands, such as the Blackfeet Reservation. Walker Lyons says they feel like they're at the mercy of the federal government. Well, they were still holding on hope that Matthew would come home. He was missing for two weeks before his body was dumped in an alleyway. And in those two weeks, there was Christmas and um, there was a lot of a lot of pain. And so my family is still dealing with that. Walker Lyon is now using her position as an advocate to help her family get justice for Matthew. It, it feels like a wound is wide open. There's no scar, scar tissue over that wound. It is wide open and it is gushing. Since Ashley went missing only a few months after Matthew was found murdered, some people in Browning think their stories are coupled together. Walker Lyon says a lot needs to change on tribal lands so the family of both Matthew and Ashley get the answers they so desperately deserve. We need to increase funding. We need to um, address the, the disconnect that's happening between the federal government and tribal government and you know the state of Montana. We need to connect these loopholes and we need to bring everybody to the table. Otherwise, this is just going to continue going. About a year after Matthew's body was found, the Federal Bureau of Investigation announced they were offering a reward in the case. They are offering up to $10,000 for anyone with information leading to an arrest in Matthew's case. If you have information about what happened to Matthew, please contact the Federal Bureau of Investigation. United States Republican Representative Greg Jean Forte provided the following statement to MTN News about missing and murdered indigenous women in the state of Montana. What happened to Ashley is a tragedy. No one would ever want to have that happen in their family. These young girls are their sisters, they're our daughters, they're our granddaughters. And we've got to pull together as a community first to raise awareness and then just to always be vigilant. Keep our eyes open. If you see something, say something. Roy Lynn Rides Horse of the Crow Agency was beaten and burned alive in April of 2016 on the Crow Indian Reservation. She died from her injuries two months later in Utah. Three people have been arrested and charged in connection to her murder. In June of 2016, before Roy Lynn died, a Walking by Faith march was held two miles outside of the Crow Agency along Highway 212. Marchers expressed frustrations with the unsolved crimes across the Crow Agency and urged tribal members to speak up when serious crimes happen. For Anita Lucchese, tribes and law enforcement need to come together to address jurisdictional issues. Roy Lynn's case, really extreme violence um, that was, I think, really disturbing for a lot of us to read about. Anita Lucchese says this is a tragic reality for people living on reservations. Lucchese is a doctoral student who started the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women database in 2015. Part of the reason that I do this work is because I was almost one of these women. I experienced domestic violence um, that threatened my life. Lucchese needed a base number to be able to start her research, but she soon found that to be difficult. None of the lists match. None of them are updated frequently. None of them are very thorough. None of them include both countries, so it really was a mess. Soon, Lucchese found out that there was a lot more missing cases than she expected to find. Since I started the database in 2015, there's been a, an average of 200 to 300 new cases every year, um, you know, and that excludes missing person cases that are solved. Um, so just, you know, new cases to add. Um, if we use that as kind of a benchmark going back to 1900, that means I'm missing about 20,000 cases. Lucchese says processing the data before 1990 is hard due to the lack of law enforcement records. Some cases were not taken seriously and others were never reported. There's been a lot of organizing from within Native communities, but it doesn't often get shared in kind of mainstream media or outside of Native communities. One name that has become a public figure for the missing and murdered Indigenous women movement is Ashley Loring. Ashley was one of Lucchese's students when she taught at the Blackfeet Community College. Lucchese says Ashley became interested in the movement when they discussed it in class. It was something that she felt like she wanted to do something about. It's unfortunate that she is participating in the way that she is. I wish she was home safe. I wish this never happened, you know, but I take comfort in knowing that 
she is doing what she wanted to do. She is raising awareness. She is, you know, building healing and safety for our women and girls. Lucchese says this is not just a native issue, though a lot of people do not understand why this degree of violence is taking place on tribal lands. She says one way to help start creating change is to give tribes the power they need to protect their own people. I think that means drastically changing the jurisdictional structure, not just in Montana, but nationally. Um, and I think that uh, would require more uh, cooperation and better relationship between tribal governments and law enforcement off, for, off the reservation. Though Lucchese says people need to start listening to the Native women who are being affected by this violence. You know, if people started listening to us uh, and really listening to, you know, our ideas on how to make our communities better, on how to strengthen our nations, on you know how to revitalize our communities, I think we would see some great changes. Although the special report has focused on Ashley, Matthew, and Roy Lynn's stories in particular, there are countless other cases involving Indigenous women and men across the United States and Canada. According to Locasey, since she began her database in 2015, she's uncovered around 20,000 missing Indigenous women cases from 1900 to present day. But as so many people said throughout this production, there is hope in awareness and Ashley's story has not only brought attention to her own disappearance, but attention to the fight so many Indigenous women before her. If you have information about Ashley's disappearance or Matthew's murder, please call the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Thank you for joining us for this production of Face the State. You've been watching Face the State.